Hi all, my name is Ryan and welcome to my channel What The Pop, where we discuss pop culture in general and Buffy a lot. Now, if you like what I do, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and click the notifications bell to get notified when I upload. It all helps the algorithm. The usual spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Buffy at least once, I may talk about things in each episode that relate to future plot points. So if you don't like spoilers, I suggest you subscribe and come back after you've watched it all. Now today we're discussing Season 1, Episode 5, Never Kill a Boy on the First Date. A plot summary. Buffy kills a vampire. Giles says she's sloppy. Plunge. Move on. Plunge. Move on. Ooh, jewelry. Blah blah, Order of Aurelius, Evil Prophecy, Roll Credits. Cute boy, Buffy goes gaga. More cute boy, Cordelia goes gaga. Prophecy gets in the way of the date. Vamps are a no-show, Buffy goes to the bronze. Cute boy is with Cordelia. Preachy loser, bus crash, Vamps slaughter people. Owen wants Buffy, Xander is jealous. Date time, Cordy is jealous. Giles in a predicament. Angel interrupts the date, Willow and Xander interrupt the date. Buffy leaves the date. Vamp attacks Buffy, Owen interrupts. Vamp attacks Owen, Buffy kills Vamp. Owen likes danger, Buffy dumps Owen. Giles wanted to be a fighter pilot. Destiny and sacrifice, anointing one arises, cue the creepy child. Uh, I used to think that this was one of the weaker episodes of Buffy season one. A funny but ultimately empty episode, but subsequent watchings have shown how important this episode is uh, in terms of Buffy's character development, as it is a Buffy-centric episode. We've heard mention of the trouble Buffy has of balancing a social life with being the Slayer, but this is the first episode where we really see these two sides of Buffy in conflict. And they very much are two sides of Buffy. We have Buffy's normal teenage girl side, and her Slayer side. Now while Owen is a completely throwaway character, sure he's cute enough, uh, but he has nothing on Angel, he serves his purpose as a choice. Does Buffy stop the Anointed One, the Slayer choice, or does she date the cute boy, the teenage girl choice? Now we've talked before how ultimately Buffy is a moral person and she sees using her gifts to prevent um, others from being killed as the moral choice. The whole, with great power comes great responsibility thing. So it is no real surprise when she chooses to go with Giles and stake out the graveyard over going on her date. Now we can see why Buffy would be attracted to Owen, as he is basically angel light. He's tall, attractive, brooding and serious. In the scene where Owen asks Buffy out again, the serious part is starkly contrasted against Xander, who also wants Buffy. When Owen offers Buffy his gold pocket watch, we see Xander look at his Tweety Bird watch, uh, highlighting his apparent immaturity, and it exacerbates uh, his jealousy. Now, on the date, Owen actually comments on Buffy's duality. He says, uh, One minute you're right there, I've got you figured. The next, it's like you're two people. But the difference between Owen and Angel uh, when they are in the scene together um, shows that Owen never stood a chance. He very much is Angel Light. On a side note, go and watch the scene again where Buffy is talking to Owen and Angel is in the background. David Boreanaz pulls some pretty damn funny faces while he's there. Now when Giles turns up with news of the five dead and then Owen turns up for the date, this time Buffy chooses Owen, the teenage girl choice, and delivers one of Buffy's most quotable lines. If the apocalypse comes, beat me. Of course, this time there is a crisis and Buffy is needed, so Xander and Willow have to go get her. Uh, and she has to do the superhero lame excuse for leaving thing, uh, to go and fight some vampires and to save Giles. By the end of the episode, Buffy has chosen the Slayer, uh, Slayer side over her teenage girl side, giving Owen the whole, it's not you, it's me speech. But this duality is explored throughout the seven seasons of Buffy, as it is a constant struggle for her to try and balance her Slayer responsibility uh, with her life as a regular person. I used the, with great power comes great responsibility quote earlier, because this struggle, this duality, is very similar to how Peter Parker has to balance his life with being that of the hero Spider-Man. Buffy is ultimately a superhero, and her dual identity as Buffy the Girl 
and Buffy the Vampire Slayer reflects this. Now, I've mentioned before how Cordelia is the What If version of Buffy. Now, What If is a series of Marvel comics that show alternative universe scenarios in the Marvel Universe, such as what if the radioactive spider in Spider-Man bit someone else instead of Peter Parker? Essentially, Cordelia is the version of Buffy if Buffy hadn't become the Slayer. Buffy says as much in the episode Helpless in Season 3. Uh, before I was the Slayer, I was, well, I, I don't want to say shallow, uh, but let's say a certain per person who will remain nameless, we'll just call her Spordelia, looked like a classical philosopher next to me. We've seen how they were similar in the opening scenes of episode 1, and how they want similar things uh, in general. In episode 3, uh, they both wanted to be cheerleaders, and here they both want the same boy. At this point in Buffy, Cordelia is pretty much the stereotypical popular mean girl in every teen movie, the Regina George of Sunnydale. Uh, and it's interesting to see how she compares to Buffy, particularly in these earlier episodes. Because in relation to Buffy's duality, Cordelia represents the dark reflection of Buffy's normal persona, of her human persona. This can be compared with Faith in Season 3, who becomes the dark reflection of, Sla of Buffy's Slayer persona. Now at this point in time, Cordelia has no redeeming qualities, and most of the time we are hoping, like Regina George, that she will get hit by a bus. But Cordelia as a character study is interesting, as the vapid and selfish version of Buffy, uh, from where she starts out, over the course of her entire character arc, she becomes more like Buffy. Now as a storytelling device, prophecies are rife throughout fiction, and this is not a good thing. Often. Prophecies are used to forward a, pl a plot in place of actual character development, and is often used to resolve bad writing. Uh, you need your main character, who's grown up on a farm all his life, to have mad sword skills to vanquish the evil horde. Just say he's destined for it, and divine grace grants him the ability. Screw any character development. Mostly though, using prophecy just adds supposed gravitas to situations that are otherwise often quiet unremarkable in the context of the show, particularly for something like Buffy. Now prophecy usually comes in two forms, an evil will rise or a hero will rise. The evil will rise is a prophecy to thwart, the hero will rise is a prophecy to fulfill. Now prophecy isn't always bad, but it works best when it isn't the central plot point. And this is something that for the most part Buffy does well. In this episode we get the prophecy of the anointed. Now while the prophecy provides conflict for Buffy, it isn't the central plot point. It merely represents her slayer life, the way Owen represents her normal life. As discussed earlier, the central plot point is Buffy reconciling the, uh, the two aspects of her life, trying to find some sort of balance between the two. Of course, the most interesting thing about this prophecy is that it was of the evil will rise form. And while our heroes believe they have thwarted it, they actually failed. Now prophecy does feature uh, a few times in Buffy. The harvest was part of a prophecy, the rise of the anointed one, Buffy's death, and of course the biggest prophecy in all of the Buffy verse, the Sans Shu, talking about the role of the vampire with a soul. Now on Buffy's dating, Xander says, what you need is a guy who already knows your deepest, darkest secrets and still says, hey, I like that girl. Of course, over the course of seven seasons of Buffy, uh, we see Buffy date a few boys. Owen, Scott Hope, Parker Abrams, Riley Finn, Angel and Spike. Of those, the only relationships that have any substance were the ones who knew her secret and liked her anyway, just like Xander said. And Giles makes an assertion that he doesn't have an instruction manual, but this isn't actually true. Apparently, there is a Slayer handbook, Giles just decided not to use it with Buffy, and reveals that in a later episode. Now, in terms of a favourite quote, uh, there can only be one from this episode. 
It's probably the most famous and most quoted line from all seven seasons of Buffy. And that is, if the apocalypse comes, beat me. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this look into the Buffy verse, please like, subscribe, and check out some other videos now. If you disagreed with anything I said, or you think I missed something important from uh, the episode, put it in the comments below. And I'll see you next time.